Hi, hi, Christian. I'm joined today by uh, Christian Mel, Professor Christian Mel, who has a practice in uh, Hamburg and a pre practice in Wimpole Street in London. And the reason I want to talk to Christian today is because um, ahead of the CDO guidelines, he actually opened his practice in Wimpole Street yesterday. And uh, I just wanted to inquire about how that went, Christian. Tell us about it. How did it go? Um, first, I have to say the practice is in Munich and in Wimpole Street. I wish sometimes it would be in Hamburg because I love the sea. And, and <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't work. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. How did it go? Um, actually, first of all, I was really, really happy to see my staff. I was super, because sometimes you don't know how, how you will react yourself if you, if you open up your business again. And I have to say the, the best thing was to see the staff again, the receptionists, the nurses and uh, the colleagues. That was really nice. So whenever they say digital live and Zoom calling, I think a lot of people will miss people. And, I, and I'm a people person. I, I, I miss the people very, very much. Yeah. So um, it was good to see everybody. It was great to see everybody. Yeah. And they yeah. were really upbeat and uh, happy to go back to work. And uh, yeah, that's just my colleague <laughs> coming in. Um, yeah, it was just, just a lovely experience to be back. And of course, seeing some patients as well and seeing that all the things we, we tried to establish worked was so, what was just happy. Yeah. But then the usual problems come. Material needs to be organized. Um, you need to treat some cross infections, so the daily business comes back. <laughs> after yeah. That, you yeah. Know. Did you did you create a whole new protocol then for the patient journey? Um, we adapted what we did in Germany. So we advised the patients. Uh, we gave them out the medical history questionnaire, and the actually the American Dent Dental Association (ADA). Yeah. Um, they have a very good um, questionnaire pre-COVID, uh, the, the COVID questionnaire. We adapted those to our to our needs. So we sent them that, sent that out and asked patients to wear a face mask when they enter the premises, disinfect their hands. So we put up disinfection, um, plexiglass screens, like sneeze guards, like everybody has now. Um, receptionist wears uh, face masks, measure the temperature. It's not really necessary, but it's just to calm people down. And uh, spacing in the waiting area. And then, of course, open the windows regularly and then just treat patients as normal gowns and visor, face masks. They, surgical head so yeah not a new protocol but slightly altered i've seen you interviewed to, uh, of this guy from dent plan or dental plan yes that's right yeah oh, he said practice something. plan practice yeah practice practice plan. Plan. yeah it yeah. was a very good interview and he said actually dentistry um always adapts a little bit to the new circumstances yes and i think this is gonna what's gonna happen now as well we can't change everything completely but we have to adapt a little bit how how um how are you coping I presume you're using aerosol. Uh, how's how's that going? Any special measures or? Um, yes, we're using aerosol, but I only start drilling when uh, first. What we do, we give every patient um, hydrogen peroxide still one point five percent, and that reduces it for one and a half to two minutes the virus load. That's proven, and then normally we try to place a rubber then immediately when we do fillings. Yeah. So the period when you could be in danger is covered, and then we. Great aerosol, yeah, but this is just water and maybe yeah. old material, amalgam, whatever it is. So, and yes, but of course, I use, I mean, we've seen 8,000 patient visits now, so, or 9,000 now since January. And I can't prove that we didn't have any infections, but I can't prove that we had any. So, yeah. yeah. So, wh wh why do you think, and I, I know you won't want to get drawn into a political debate, but why do you think uh, uh, the UK is being so? slow at responding to the to reopening dentistry in the uk why do you think the cdos have been so uh, ineffectual or that's how it looks to me anyway you know it's always difficult to judge if you don't have all the uh, all the information ready yeah and, and i'm not part of i'm not part of all these bodies but so i can only in this crisis everybody's got an opinion yeah, so <laughs> that's for sure. I have got one as well, but it's not very well founded, I'm sure. Nobody wants to take the blame. If something goes wrong, nobody wants to take the blame. As simple as that. But it's still ambivalent, isn't it? It's still, with the use of aerosol, it's still unclear. And, you know, you, you know you've got to be, you know, you can't 
there's no clear direction on it. And yet the practices officially are opening um, on Monday. And yet the, the you know, what, what's your advice to your colleagues, your UK colleagues, your Irish colleagues? You know what my advice is, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> you asked me the question that we meant. Good cross infection, good protection, uh, wear the FFP2 mask in the beginning if, if you're in an area where you have a lot of COVID cases. If you have suspected COVID cases, send them home. Um, disinfect the properties, protect yourself, visor, surgical head, just gauns. If, if you feel insecure, use some, some surgical gauns. Problem NHS can't open because they, they don't have the PPE. As long as, as, as long as they don't have the PPE, how, how can they open? How can the CDO, yeah, go ahead, no problem. Yeah. It's very difficult. And we try to order surgical gowns, surgical heads, masks in England. You don't get any, nowhere. Really? Dental directory is empty, Henry Sean is empty, or all, all, they don't have it. They don't have stock, it's all out. So this is at least our experience. So it's going to be very, very difficult uh, for the NHS then to stop them. What's it like in Germany getting uh, PPE equipment? Yeah. No problem. No problem. FFP2 masks have been difficult because, I mean, I have some Romanian friends as well. I make myself some enemies and they offered me 50,000 masks. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So some equipment fell off the way and some Chinese nurses bought some equipment. They ordered 4,000. And only yeah. 1,000 came, and the rest came off the, the truckload somewhere on, on the way. All right. So there's a lot of <laughs> messing around. Yeah. yeah. Christian, can we talk about the business side of your business? Um, because obviously, um, you know, you, a business has to make money, and uh, you've been closed for a long period of time. I know you've recently refurbished your gorgeous practice in Ripple Street. Um, I'm sort of... I'm, I'm worried for, for um, most of my clients when they're going back to a situation where production is being expanded uh, and there's a, a burn rate of an extra hour a day or an hour and a half a day and because the patient journey is fragmented and because of the requirement to uh, decon. Um, and then we've got the cost of the PPE. Uh, so production and the actual cost of delivery seems to be changing dramatically. Not to mention the fact that we've got a massive recession coming up. So tell me how you are sort of coping with that from a financial perspective. I have to be honest, I, I'm worried. I told you before we started recording, of course I'm worried. Um, and uh, we need to make, I always tell, tell, tell openly what we need. Uh, we pay quite a considerable amount of rent. So we need, we need to make something around 40,000 pounds a month to break even. Right. And uh, then you always have some additional costs, four, five, sometimes even 10,000 pounds a month. So we're not making money at the moment. If we have these big, the big break times at the moment, uh, PPE and so on, we're not making money. What will help is uh, the furlough scheme, the flexible furlough scheme from 1st of July. So that means you can maybe compress a little bit uh, your working hours. That's what we did in Germany as well. We have, we have it open from eight o'clock in the morning till seven in the evening. Um, but for that time, we needed a lot of additional staff. And we made a lot, like 10 to 15,000 turnover a month extra because of these longer opening hours. But we also spent 10 to 15,000 extra. The cost base went right up. Yes, exactly. So what we did here is compress. We're now open from 8.30 in the morning to 5.30 in the evening. Yes. And trying to be very efficient and look at all the costs from flowers to newspapers to whatever costs are and try to save where we can. Not, not everything, because we still want to be a beautiful practice, but we have to save somewhere. Are you going to increase your fees to your clients? No. Tell me why not. Um, because... I think they're considerably high. And uh, I mean, for a crown, we charge 1,500 pounds. Wow. And the lab work of that is 500 pounds. So it's 1,000 left for the dentist. Yeah. And um, I mean, these are exactly the prices we charge in Germany as well, the, the standard here. Um, but this is still a lot of money. And I would like people, I, I don't know that, 
I mean, a lot of people can afford it actually because a new mobile phone costs 1,200 pounds, right? Yeah. Or at least between 600 and 1,200 pounds. So, and if you have a crown which lasts you 20, 30 years, I think it's money well spent. Yeah. And, um, but we're not gonna increase our price because I think they're high enough, especially when, when a recession is coming. I want people to be able to afford at least some kind of dentistry. And what, what do you charge just for the rest of our viewers, just give us an indication. What do you charge for implants? I think left hand, it's that simple. Normal consultation takes 45 minutes, it's 180 pounds. Yeah. It's all included, um, including treatment, writing the treatment plan, then filling starts from 150 to 350, um, depending on, on this how, how many time you have to spend. Yes. Um, an implant starts with 1,600, I believe. Uh, without augmentation and the exposure of the implant excluded, included, sorry, included. And then depending bone augmentation between six and 800 pounds. And um, so, yeah, I mean, if you, we want to do a proper job and the only way we can ensure we do a proper job is that we spend time. Yeah. And um, the time in order to be, do, the problem for the patient is that they are, very often only see what you do at that time you spend with them. But of course, dentists, or doctors, or people like you, they, they invest a long, long, long time for their own education to become good in, in what they do. So patients actually don't pay the price for what they're having at the moment, but they pay for the education of the dentist or the surgeon or the orthodontist as well. Yes. And, and the better you are, it's, it's like with a good lawyer. If you have an extremely good lawyer, he charges 2,000 pounds an hour. If you have a not so good lawyer, you maybe just he just charges one or two hundred pounds. So maybe that justifies the pricing. That's, that's the way it goes. Um, what about the pay plans of your colleagues? Are you adjusting them? You know, I, I you know, there's a lot of people looking at the cost of associates and uh, bringing them down four or five points. Um, so instead of being forty-five, maybe they're on forty. Um, so they're pushing down in order to generate some extra profit because the profitability of the business is under massive pressure. I mean, you know, most dental practices don't actually have a big profit at the end of the day because they pay their clini clinicians so well. So mm -hmm. if you work in dentistry, you, you know, you're a well-paid person. Um, so a lot of people are considering the pay plans of associates. It's something which worries me every day and night, especially at night. You're right. Okay. Um, the, the problem is we have contracts, right? And it pacta sunt servanda. That means if you have a contract, you try to serve it. And for me as a manager, I have to try to make the business run as smooth and as good as possible that I can still adhere to these contracts. If the water's up to here, then I'll have to adjust them. But I, I try at the moment not to. Because they, they have families as well. They have kids, they have mortgages. And um, if, if I do that, I have to be really able to justify it. Well, you know, there are some additional costs that are hitting your practice, the very obvious costs that are hitting the practice and the profitability is under substantial threat. And yeah. maybe it's, it's good to sort of accept that and say to everybody, look guys, we can't pay what we were paying, but let's try and keep the business open. So we all have to make sacrifices. We just opened. So you don't know yet. Uh, I, I, I know actually, but I'm a coward because I dread. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am. I, I dread these talks where you have to tell people they're going to be worse off or you have to fire them. I dread this. I don't like them. I've done that many times in my life. I still hate them. Yeah. So, nice. it's, it's not nice. It's never nice. Yeah. And I had to do a lot of times in my life, but I don't like it. So I try everything I can. Um, and I hope that it's getting back to normal. <laughs> I mean, I'm a very optimistic person. The virus is dying down in the United Kingdom as well. Um, Sweden is always my reference. <laughs> it's dying down as well. Uh, Germany has uh, two, three hundred cases uh, a month. And um, there's a lot of writings about a second wave and so on, but I, also, there's a lot of good news about as well. I mean, hopefully we're going to have a vaccine maybe um, yeah. maybe by September and maybe in production in October, November. <laughs> but how, how they always say, hope is the first step to a good depression. 
So, <laughs> but I'm still very hopeful. <laughs> I think we have to be hopeful, but uh, we still have to keep an eye on uh, reality. And, uh, and I, I, will, I, I will keep an eye on it. And if I have to adjust, I will have to talk to my associates, of yeah. course. But for now, I try to stick to what I promised them. Well, that's very laudable. Um, can you talk to me about hygiene? Um, how how the sort of hygiene appointments might work are, are working in Wimpole Street now? Uh, we will start again from next week. The first week we didn't have any hygiene because we're on a staged approach. Yeah. Um, the emergency appointments first, uh, extractions, uh, trepanations if people are in pain because I think that's justified. And then from next week, when we officially are allowed to open, then we will start again with the normal treatments and with dental hygiene as well. Of course, again, surgical cap, visor, face mask, gown, if they want to. And if they need, we have an extra nurse. But normally, I, I, I actually sat here with our dental hygienists, and uh, they showed me how they do it. And actually, they are very good at using the airflow and the suction at the same time. And I went to the dental hygienist myself, and I checked my face afterwards, and there were barely anything on it. So uh, you, if you without have, a nurse, no nurse, just the no nurse. I, I tested both nurse and no nurse, just yeah. myself, just just to make sure. And it, does and it make worked. A big difference. It does yeah. make a big difference to the cost base. Not yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, we charge for the dental hygiene 130 pounds, and it costs us around 50 pounds an hour. Not just the dental hygiene, but the materials as well. So it's not a great margin. But I think we have to offer the patients dental hygiene. How long are your appointments? You asked me last time, still yeah. 60 minutes. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to yeah. check in with you on that. Yeah. Dental hygiene, I, I, I listened to your chat today in the morning. Um, you said 20 minutes. That's not a dental hygiene. That's impossible. Yeah. If you want to do proper, like, like you, the colleague from Dental Finance said, it's proper debridement, uh, subgingival debridement if you have to, proper airflow, polish, dietary advice, go through the, the brushes, show them which brushes to use and so on and so on so education yes it's, it's not just quickly and that's it and get the money that's not that's not good in my opinion yeah very good christian thank you very much that was very good i really appreciate your time no and, uh, i was happy to see you <laughs> thank you can i check in again with you in about three months and you can tell us how the first three months back yeah i, I can tell you the first day yesterday we made uh, two and a half thousand pounds uh, today, three and a half thousand pounds. So I'm actually, actually pleased because the account was down on minus 15,000. <laughs> yeah. So uh, to have some income is a great feeling and gives me some hope. Yeah. Good man. Yeah. Let's hope. And all, what I want to say, all the best to my colleagues as well. Don't close, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, keep your hopes up. It will be okay. It will be okay. And don't be a victim. No. Take care, Christian. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.